Hi, this is a follow-up video from my previous one. Uh, having to play around with this Rubidium frequency standard I got from the CSIRO. It was their, uh, it looks like their backup uh, time measurement reference uh, Rubidium standard uh, GPS discipline. We've got ourselves a GPS uh, reference oscillator here. We've got ourselves a Rubidium frequency standard, which I think might be a Stanford Research uh, Systems one. We'll find out. And we've got um, four um, IRT distribution uh, amplifiers in here, as well as a dual AC main source. And I've had it powered up for a few uh, tens of minutes, and it took maybe uh, five minutes for the Rubidium to lock in. The one pulse per second is pulsing, but I haven't got a GPS uh, antenna attached to it, so I'm not sure whether or not that indicates that it hasn't, I presume it hasn't locked, I mean it is pulsing at once per second, but I don't know, I haven't uh, looked at the details of that one yet, so let's presume it's not um, GPS locked at this stage, it's just a rubidium standard, which is of course more than good enough for the EEV log lab here, and I've got it hooked up, well I will in a second have it hooked up to the uh, Agilent frequency counter I also got, here it is, here we go, and look at that, it is, uh, this is the 10 megahertz um, out from that Rubidium oscillator, and it is uh, significantly out, it's uh, 71 hertz out. Now of course, this one um, doesn't have any um, high order um, option on the time base, so it's only got the stock time base in it, which is only uh, rated to about uh, 5 ppm or thereabouts, not taking into account um, the drift and uh, stuff like that. So 5 ppm on 10 megahertz is actually going to be 50 hertz here. So, I, you know, so sort of, you know, as a rough ballpark, you sort of would have expected it to be under uh, 50 there for this uh, stock time base, but it's not at 71. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I'm assuming that this rubidium is, uh, you know, bang on because these things, you know, do not, um, they, they basically, they're, they're, you know, once they lock, they're, they're pretty, uh, pretty reliable. You can pretty much guarantee that you're getting bang on 10 megahertz out. I haven't checked the specs because we don't know what unit, uh, what, uh, brand rubidium's in there yet, but, um, so that's significantly out. So, um, assuming that rubidium is spot on, um, this thing is, uh, probably needs a, uh, a tweak, but let me hook it up here to my, uh, old Phillips, here we go, old Phillips PM6672, and look at that, there we go, this one actually has an uh, ovenized oscillator in there, it's pretty good, I forget the exact uh, spec off the top of my head, but it is uh, fully optioned up with the highest um, ovenized oscillator in there, and it's basically bang on, so that um, pretty much confirms that uh, the rubidium is uh, locked and working, and then if we take that out and we hook it up to, which is kind of not really a proper frequency counter, but it's the uh, Rigol uh, DG4000 uh, series uh, function generator, and it's got a counter option here you can enable, it's got a counter on the um, input, I don't really like it, it jumps around a, a fair bit, so you can't really, you know, there's no low order digits sort of updating there, so you can't sort of, you know, see where it's at, but uh, pretty much, you know, it is, um, the figures it's giving are well within that, um, well, you know, well within, say, the 5 ppm we'll get in, um, you know, that's in the order of, you know, a couple of ppm there, so, um, it's, you know, it's pretty good, it looks like this rubidium works fine, so I'm pretty darn happy with this thing, so what we'll probably do now is just, uh, unscrew these and, uh, take a look at what's inside, because there should be a customised backplane in there, and these uh, rack modules, these uh, Eurocard um, style uh, option cars, just slide into the uh, customised backplane, and um, we can have a look at that as well, but I'm really curious to know what rubidium is in there. My guess is a Stanford Research one, which I've uh, used before, have a bit of experience with those, they're very nice, and uh, they're worth quite a bit, so let's crack it open. And here we go, we're gonna, looks like there's a power box, uh, power supply in there, it's gonna, it's got, it looks like custom board built in, this would have been uh, custom designed by somebody at the uh, CSIRO, or maybe they farmed it out, I, I don't know, but uh, we have custom board in there, there's our connector on the back, and ta-da, yes, PRS 10. I was bang on. There we go. It is a Stanford Research Systems uh, model PRS-10 
rubidium frequency standard, you know, industry standard uh, module. Probably every man made in the United States of America. USA, USA, USA. Um, <laughs> serial number 25,000. These things are this rubidium oscillator. I think it retails for about 1300 bucks or something like that. These are um, a very good uh, units, very low uh, phase noise. I've used them in very uh, critical systems and stuff like that very low phase phase noise so a phenomenal um uh, rubidium standard here for the lab i you know i probably never get another one of these things so i think uh this one's definitely a uh, keeper and all the distribution amplifiers wow um awesome stuff so yeah that's worth a lot it's got like a 20 year uh, lamp life so there's no date on that one but uh yeah and they get quite warm that one's been going for you know, 15 minutes or something. It's heated up to at least 45 degrees or something like that. So uh, let's have a look, see if we can uh, get this board out and uh, have a look at the main board. But of course, it's all in here. This is just a, going to be a uh, power supply here and just a little, uh, uh, you know, just some, some connections and uh, stuff like that, really. There's not going to be much at all. Well, actually, there is a uh, fair bit inside this thing because I forgot um, they do have on the back uh, panel over here from the outputs here they have direct uh, BNC's from this module which have uh, 10 megahertz and the ref 10 megahertz reference output the uh, 5 megahertz reference output and one pulse per second and a couple of each um, so they've got to have uh, some dividers on here and um, uh, stuff like that so we've got an LT1259 uh, current uh, feedback amp there and then just some uh, 74 HC series logic and two big uh, power bricks and some filter caps and some bridge rectifiers. That's the uh, AC input. It looks like it can select um, AC or DC input. It's got the uh, LED on the front panel over here to say which uh, power source it's actually coming from. So there, they're really uh, beasts, those are Hercules 6. Power modules, very nice. Um, you know, 25 watt modules, brilliant. And uh, there it is, um, National Measurements Lab SRS. Rubidium version 1, 2001. So this would have been uh, designed and laid out, I guess, by um, someone at the uh, CSIRO National Measurements Lab. And uh, this would have been designed as their um, custom, you know, their primary uh, custom standard. And I've done uh, very similar things for uh, labs at companies I've worked out. We've designed, I've designed and built uh, custom uh, test instruments and uh, reference calibration instruments and uh, stuff like that in almost identical uh, racks to these ones so all very very familiar a couple of bodges a little bodge there there's a bodge resistor in there and there's it looks like we've got a bodge resistor across there looks like they put a 75 ohm terminator on the back of that um oh way here we go whoa look out our rubidium don't want to drop our rubidium um a couple of bodge wires on the back there a few little shorts but uh there you go um, I mean, you know, it, all the magic, of course, happens in the Stanford Research Module. They've got a nice uh, heat sink here. It looks like they've put some uh, thermal grease behind there to uh, uh, spread the heat onto the uh, chassis, of course. This thing's going to get quite warm during operation, but uh, that's, that's all there is to it. You know, there's nothing fancy on here, just some dividers and uh, stuff like that. Because they do build this into Stanford Research. I can't remember the model number, but they do. Um, I used to have one. Um, from my old company, they um, build this uh, same rubidium uh, standard and they sell a product that has all of, you know, a similar board to this built in. It's got like, you know, 20 BNCs on the back, which has all the 10 megahertz, 5 megahertz, one pulse per second output, all that sort of stuff, sort of uh, built into, sort of, sort of, you know, a usable, uh, an, an actual usable product. Because if you just buy this Stanford Research uh, rubidium module, you'd need to add the other. Uh, stuff around it, you know, you've got to add the uh, power supply and stuff like that. In fact, there it, it uh, has the pinouts on there. There it is, 10 megahertz uh, reference output plus 7 dBm. It's got the lock and the one pulse per, per second output. So I can now look up the manual for that and go, aha, what happens if that one's actually, um, you know, flashing? So, and then there's a analog frequency adjust, and I'm probably not doing anything with that. Um, TXT monitor out, one pulse per second in or photo out, tw plus 24 volt supply, blah, blah, blah. There you go. So, beautiful little Stanford research module there. I love it. Huge score. 
And now for the GPS card. Ta-da! That's the great thing about these racks. You can just slide them in and out. Oh, look at that. They've actually uh, put... Look at that. They've got the coax going. They've designed that so that sits right out the back of the case like that. So, you know, that's what you do when all these things are custom designed. But, oh, look at that. Isn't that fancy? I like it. Very nice. We'll take a good look at that. And if you've never seen inside one of these... Uh, Eurocard racks and you know it's it's not much I mean there's a uh, oh no that's an IRT okay so what they've done they haven't custom designed the uh, back plane that's an IRT brand same as the uh, same as the distribution amps here so they've just bought an off-the-shelf IRT uh, rack you know uh, rack unit and the back plane's been designed by them and it's got holes up in the back of the board that can just poke out the back there and uh, that's it. So they've just, uh, you know, designed, they're standardized around that. So they've just gone, right, we'll use one of these IRT. We need the IRT amplifiers anyway. They come with the nice dual AC power supply and all that sort of stuff. So we need the distribution amps. So we'll just buy those off the shelf, buy the whole rack, and then we'll design our uh, Rubidium uh, standard and our GPS standard to go inside that. So let's see if the, uh, I don't, yeah, the NMI looks like they've done this one too. There you go, it's the Javid B031 NMI National Measurements Institute 2004. And it is a uh, top con, they call it, Euro, half, well, half Euro uh, GPS receiver. And uh, it's a uh, Javid navigation system. So, of course, uh, you know, NMI wouldn't have designed the uh, GPS receiver in this. They're just uh, designing the backboard here, the uh, Eurocard backboard to uh, sit here. They've got a riser board going up here to mate into this uh, off-the-shelf uh, one from Javid Navigation Systems. I will, uh, look at that package, look at that. Don't know what's going on there, but uh, got a big metal can down the side, not sure what that chip is, we'll have to get the right angle on that and the macro lens, but uh, yeah, just an off-the-shelf uh, GPS receiver. No surprises at all, but they have to be specifically designed. I mean, you know, not all GPS receive, receivers are uh, suitable for this. They have to have uh, not not only the one pulse per second um, output, but, you know, it really has to be like, a, you know, low phase noise and blah, 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 everything else. It's got to be, you know, it's got to be properly designed. If you're, you know, this is obviously the primary reference uh, standard for the uh, National um, Institute here, and really, you know, they're... they're you know, they're not just going to whack some eBay uh, cheapie in here. So, mine are made in USA. There we go. So, I might actually uh, have a look at that one and uh, see if I can get any data on it. No, as it turns out, I couldn't really find any info on that. I think it's a really old uh, model. They do make uh, the same ones, these uh, Eurocard um, connector interface uh, modules. They still do uh, make them, but I think it's a slightly older one. That metal cam, by the way, is a uh, battery under there. And the board's actually uh, conformally coated. If you can see the uh, see the coating on that, perhaps. So you can tell it's conformally coated. You can see the gloss on, say, you know, the side of the chip down there. You can see uh, see that glossy coating. They put a clear conformal coating on this board. Maybe it comes standard with that because the uh, uh, the other board, of course, doesn't have uh, any conformal coating on it, the custom board from the NMI. And by the way. Um, no surprises, it's uh, hand soldered, um, you know, they would have made uh, probably two of these, um, one is the primary one, one is the backup one, which I've got here, so, you know, um, yeah, someone's uh, crusty hand solder in there, they've had a hack job at uh, that, which is a little, uh, little regulator there. Nothing special, it's just a power supply and a uh, 74244, uh, basically hooked onto the commercial uh, GPS Receiver, they've got some uh, Dallas Semiconductor stuff down in there, probably a little um, ID stuff, and a brick power supply, of course. When you're designing a custom uh, bit of test gear like this, you don't bother dicking around doing the power supplies. You're only going to make, as I said, like a couple of these. I've made precisely one of something before, you know, or I've made ten. You're not going to dick around. You're just going to use an off-the-shelf power module. Yeah, they might cost 50 bucks from DigiKey, but... 
whoop de doo who cares, you know, I mean, geez, you know, your, your time's easily, you know, half an hour of your time's easily worth that, so you just buy off the shelf ones, and they work, and uh, so there you go, just an off the shelf uh, GPS receiver, we've got some uh, stuff on the back here in terms of, uh, what is it, just a power supply stuff really, nothing uh, particularly special, so there you go, um, I'm going to have to uh, actually try this and get uh, GPS coverage on the thing. I don't actually have a connector for that, so it looks like it's, yeah, there it is. Right, right angle over there. I don't have a uh, GPS connector to uh, fit that at the moment, but I will endeavour to uh, possibly get some GPS reception for this thing, see if it still uh, locks in, but, uh, you know, I'm not that uh, fussy here in the EEV blog lab. I've now got a Stanford Research Rubidium. Beauty. And here's one of these IRT video distribution amplifiers, because that's essentially what they are. It's a, called a VDA. It's the VA, uh, VA761 model. They're just video distribution uh, amplifiers. Quite uh, good ones, of course. And you can adjust uh, the equal gain and equalization of these things, because these are, uh, because the 10 megahertz uh, reference outputs of these uh, rubidiums, they're just um, uh, sine waves. So effectively, you know, a video distribution amp is what you want. So yeah, there's not much on there at all. Just some uh, Elantec. There you go. They went uh, they went bust, didn't they? Or they were uh, bought out by someone. Elantec uh, 2120s and 2054, uh, 204 for 2045s, I think. Can't really read that, but uh, there you go. It's got a hum adjustment as well. Look at that. Um, yeah, just Atlantic video distribution amplifiers. Atlantic were uh, very big in the um, uh, video uh, op amp and uh, that sort of video driver market. You know, big uh, cable drivers and things like that. I've used those before. So nothing fancy there at all. Shielding plate on the back. Nice touch. I like it. So I've got three of those plus a VA700. It looks like it's got an output monitor and a selection switch. Not exactly sure what they're using that for. And it's another video distribution amplifier. A bit more complicated than the other one. Got lots of, uh, looks like we've got some discrete trannies on here. Look at this front end. Oh, adjustment pots. Been somebody with a grey beard and right tongue angle has tweaked those and sealed the uh, pots off there. And we have some Burr Brown uh, op amps. Nothing really special. Eh, it's a Euro video distribution amplifier. Woohoo! And on the back here, they've gone to the trouble to, uh, of course, design a custom uh, back plate as well. NMI, there it is. This is for the uh, GPS receiver. Couple of buttons on there. Push. What does that do? FN. No idea. There's another one. Power button down here. And uh, there is our uh, reference. Uh, well, that's our um, antenna input here. I'm not sure where these cables are going to then. Not sure what's going on there. Ah, I see what they've done. It's just a uh, patch cable. It's basically uh, just uh, converting here. This plugs into there like that and it just converts it to uh, a more standardized connector. And I showed these in the previous video. There's the uh, custom NMI um, SRS uh, Rubidium backplane, one pulse per second output, in fact they got two of those, they got two 5 megahertz outputs, and they got two 2 megahertz outputs as well, and they've got, a, it looks like a power supply connector output isn't populated, and a comms port as well, just for uh, getting the data out of that uh, rubidium uh, oscillator, if they want. So the whole idea of course is that you just take your 10, 5 or 1 uh, pulse per second output, you just uh, put them into the inputs here and you got a whole bunch of uh, outputs to power all of your lab gear. And uh, all of, well in this case from the uh, National Measurements uh, Institute, all of their um, uh, standards and uh, test gear and frequency counters and scopes and spectrum analyzers and everything else, all uh, GPS uh, disciplined rubidium. And I thought I'd take a quick peek inside this uh, Agilent frequency counter here. Haven't taken one of these parts before. Look at this. It's a bit how you doing. I mean, you know, look at the, just the bare power supply. Sure, it's got the nice, um, you know, insulated flap over the top, but like, it just, what? It's just sitting there. I, I don't know. I didn't expect that. I was sort of, you know, 
I've been mooned again. Like you open it up and blah, there's this ugly, you know, third party, um, you know, I'm sure it's a reasonably uh, good quality uh, power supply, but I don't know. It's just, ugh. Anyway, look at the ton of room in this thing. They've um, got a Xilinx uh, FPGA down there or PLD. Here's the bottom of it. Quite a bit on the bottom, actually. Um, obviously, this, uh, these options, this uh, space in here is for, you know, various uh, options, probably for the, uh, uh, you know, the high-performance oven uh, oscillator and uh, stuff like that. But, yeah, uh, nice little touch. They've put a uh, plastic foot on there just to support the board on the back case when it slides on. This isn't going to be a full teardown. I won't even bother with the uh, close-ups, but, yeah... Oh, they're a bit disappointed with that. I was hoping to uh, um, open it up and see if there was a uh, tweaking uh, cap for just the, uh, you know, the 5 ppm uh, crystal oscillator, but I think it's going to be under there somewhere. Bugger. No idea what that board from ERG is doing there off the offhand. It's got a uh, little isolation transformer on it. Not sure what the other chip's doing, and I uh, don't know. They've gone to a bit of trouble to... Uh, mount a third-party board off there. There you go, I just flipped out the power supply. Uh, yeah, manufactured by uh, Delta for HP. It's got a HP part number, as you'd expect. Um, dodgy little uh, fan on the thing. Bloody hell, it's loud. And it goes when you actually um, don't even have it powered on because it's a soft power switch on the front. And you might have uh, heard it in the background uh, going before in some of the, uh, at the start of the video. And yeah, it's hopeless. Unbelievable. Anyway, there we are, down in there, looks like we have a Motorola uh, processor, we've got some ROMs there, and uh, where's our oscillator? That metal can down the bottom, Ooh, oh, I think there's an adjustment pot on the back, doll, oh, didn't even see it. See, the thing's turned off, and you can probably hear the fan noise, listen. There you go, pain in the ass. the fan just, you know, stays on, and it's just a soft power button crazy anyway it's powered it up it's doing its self test pass gpib yeah blah 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 now we can plug it in we can calibrate it all right we'll give it a go now the most important thing with calibration adjustment is the tongue angle it's got to be correct and if you're astute you notice the one eye pop eye technique as well very important one eye tongue at the right angle like that and a uh, non-magnetic, uh, non-metallic screwdriver as well for these, uh, uh, I'm assuming it's a cap on the back there. So one of these, eh, we should be able to tweak it. Ah, oh, half a bee's dick, I don't know. It's a bit dodgy, it's hard to do it, but geez, I'm only down to 30. That's uh, 30 ppm, that's hopeless. Let me try and do it off camera. Tell you what, this ain't, this ain't easy. Oh, can't talk and have the correct tongue angle at the same time, but gee, there's, ah, oh, this pot, these st stock standard oscillators are crap. That's like as good as I can get it. There we go, four, four lousy PPM in that. That's, oh, sorry, 0.4 uh, PPM. So, yeah, because yeah, it's 10 megahertz. So, that, you know. That's okay, but yeah, these stock oscillators are awful. I mean, you know, I was um, putting, you know, that like it's sort of got some springiness to the adjustment in there, and then it just, whoa, whoa, there's no sweet spot. I mean, it's just, ah, uh, it's just awful. But hey, yeah, that's all right. 0.6 ppm, good enough for Australia. Catch you next time.